Hello， 大家好，这里是洛杉矶华人资讯网的直播现场，我是主播莉亚。试管婴儿给很多想要宝宝的家庭带来希望。有些人呢，因为个人的因素或者是身体健康原因，选择做试管来完成自己的家庭。每个人都希望自己的成功率啊越高越好，最好一次就能成功。但实际上啊，试管婴儿的成功率受到很多方面因素的影响，受孕者必须严格遵医嘱。另外呢，生活习惯也非常重要，有一些关键点需要大家来注意。以帮助提高胚胎移植的成功率。那么今天呢，我们节目将会聚焦这一话题。加入到节目现场的是被美国 Newsweek 新闻周刊评价为美国最佳生育诊所的 HRC 生殖医院 Beverly Hills 分院的专家 Dr. g a d i r Thank you so much, Dr. g a d i r for joining us today. Thank you so much. Uh, first, I would like to briefly introduce you. Ah,、uh, so you know, Doctor Gadir, he is a senior expert in reproductive medicine. 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 So first, I would like to、uh, talk about today's topic. It's very a crucial step in the IVF process. It's how to improve the success rate for embryo transfer. Let's start with what couples should do in their preparation. So before the beginning the embryo transfer cycle and during the medication period, what lifestyle and healthy considerations are important to keep in mind? So it's very important to understand that the health of your body is going to be rather important with the health of implantation、mm -hmm. and your chance of implantation. So I tell everyone that they should be on a very healthy and clean prenatal vitamin. I also give patients an omega supplement, which is called omega three DHA.、Mm -hmm. We make sure that their vitamin D levels are good. We encourage people to have their body weight in a very normal range. And also have done regular exercise and are the top shape they can be before going forward with the process. Once they begin the process, there is involvement with different things. One thing that I highly encourage for patients is sometimes to do a practice cycle the month before the embryo cycle is transfer, and it's called an ERA mock cycle.、Mm -hmm. It allows us to test the lining of the uterus and make sure that it is healthy. And it is normal, and it is ready for implantation before the actual embryo can go ahead and be transferred the following month, giving us some important information about the lining of the uterus. Got it. That's excellent advice for a couple. They are wanting to prepare for the cycle, and now after the embryo transfer, many people wonder how they can improve the chance of the implantation. And are there any specific foods or activities you recommend? And how long should be they are going to the bed rest during the, this period? So being on strict bed rest, which means laying in the bed and not moving for two days, is no longer recommended. Okay. Most of the research in the area of fertility has recommended two days of relaxing at home. You can be in the bed, you can be on your furniture, you can be at the table eating, you can open the door and get some fresh air. It's actually better than laying in bed and not moving. During those two days of relaxation at home, I highly encourage people to eat diet to warm the inside of their body. In the Chinese population, they are very familiar. With keeping the foods that are good for implantation, we think that foods like meat and soups and warmer foods, nuts and dates and things that make your inside a little bit on the warmer side are actually better for you for implantation. Foods such as fish and cold vegetables maybe not so good for the implantation time period. So keeping your body at a warmer state. And relaxing and keeping your mind nice and clean and in a good state is probably the best thing. After the two days of relaxation are done, we encourage people not to resume exercise or intercourse yet until we tell them when they can go back. Got it. You mentioned about the mental health, so mental health does count. You know, keep you in a good mood. 
I think that mental health is very important for every aspect of the life. And I think it is very important to have a positive attitude, positive lookout, and a good mental state during the time of the embryo transfer. That's very helpful. And after transfer, uh, it's also important to know what warning signs to watch for. So, for example, could you please tell us what situations should be closely monitored after embryo transfer, especially if there is a bleeding occurred? So, what should they do after these kind of the situations? So, during the time period of implantation, bleeding is our number one issue. If someone does have bleeding, we tell them immediately to stop taking any kind of aspirin that was given to them. Also, sometimes increasing the dose of the progesterone injection relaxes the uterus more, and it's important to discuss that with the doctor and see what the doctor recommends and how much more progesterone would be beneficial. Once this increases, I think it relaxes the uterus, and I do think at that point, maybe laying in bed and relaxing is probably the best thing to do to control any kind of bleeding and increase implantation rate. Got it. So, bleeding. What kind of the color of the blood blood can be considered as bleeding? Is brown or is like fresh red? Well, what we sometimes it is absolutely natural to have what's called implantation bleeding.、Mm -hmm. A little bit of blood that's bright red that maybe will turn brown. It's okay. Either one is a good sign, kind of telling us that the embryo is implanting. But when it becomes like a period blood. And continues and won't stop. It becomes a problem for us. Great. So stay alert on that. And another、yes. key factor is,、um, you know, in IVF is very、uh, familiar. We are going to use medications to support pregnancy. And could you please explain which medications are essential and why injections are also crucial to the process? Yes. So, estrogen and progesterone are the two main hormones involved with the menstrual cycle. They are also the two main hormones that help for implantation to occur. So, we have to balance the first part of the preparation for implantation with estrogen, and then the second part with progesterone. And both of these are necessary to allow for implantation. And as a result of the implantation, there's a natural hormone that the body creates called beta HCG. Which tells us there has been implantation, and that's how the mother and the baby, as the embryo, begin to communicate, is with the rising level of beta HCG hormone. Got it. It is very important to follow the prescribed treatment plan. And moving on, HRC is very known for having advanced、uh, laboratory. Could you please share some details about the success rate、um, of revering, revering the embryos at HRC? So for 35 years and more, HRC has been at the top of their game with one of the highest level of scientific knowledge and data and laboratory that they bring to the involvement of IVF. Currently, all of the IVF labs that are owned and run by HRC are having some of the highest success rates in the entire country and around the world. We take pride in doing everything incredibly carefully with the highest quality of materials. And solutions and incubators, an incredibly well-trained embryology team that allows us to have one of the highest success rates that's available in the area of fertility. Got it. So, if someone failed in their first cycle, what kind of like additional preparation are typically need for their second embryo transfer? So, if someone fails in the first transfer, there are additional blood panels and blood tests that we like to recommend. Implantation failure. We check for blood clotting factors. Sometimes we check for other aspects inside of the uterus by looking carefully in the uterus、mm -hmm. during a surgical procedure and during ultrasounds. And all of these procedures that allows us to see the uterus and the body and the hormone levels all more carefully allow for better implantation. And also, there are some additional medications we can add to increase the opportunity of implantation on a future cycle. Got it. So, based on your experience, what factors have contributed to the failure? Like usually. So sometimes it can be issues with the bodies of the women rejecting the pregnancy. So we need to correct the underlying problem with a patient possibly seeing a rheumatologist or a hematologist. 
both about their body's autoimmune status and their blood levels. And these things generally allow us to help correct these problems. Got it. We have a lot of like Chinese people. They probably wanted to, you know, take a flight from Beijing to Los Angeles to have the embryo transfer. And usually they have tight schedule and probably wanted to fly back. So what kind of like, you know, um, how many days they should stay here and then they should consideration on the international traveling. So to do the entire cycle here will take a minimum of 14 days. I like to please ask our patients to give a few days of recovery after the procedure is done before going in an airplane. But that's usually what we require for them to be here. Got it. What kind of like uh, misconceptions that people usually have regarding the embryo transfer? And what kind of questions you have been asked a lot and you wanted to let people know the answer? So I think the embryo transfer has a lot to do with the talent of the doctor. I think having very incredible fine motor activity of the hand by the doctor and knowledge of doing many transfers in the past allows for a transfer to have a higher success rate. And finally, what would be your key pieces of advice for someone who considering to have um, the embryo transfer or currently they are undergoing the embryo transfer? Well, I want to give some general recommendation for anyone undergoing or considering doing fertility treatment is that doing anything should be done at a younger age. Our biggest issue we have with our patients that are coming to us from Asia and from China specifically is that people are waiting too long. So doing egg freezing, doing IVF, and doing everything at a younger age is probably going to give them the best outcome of all. I think that everyone by the age of 30 should do an assessment of their fertility to see how fertile they are. And if you want to have more than one kid, then you should kind of discuss if you should be saving and preserving either eggs or embryos for future use. And making those at a younger age will give you a better outcome even if you are using them later. Got it. Thank you so much, Dr. Gadia, for sharing your expertise today. And your advice has been incredibly informative and assure anyone who considering IVF and embryo transfer. We appreciate your time and insights and hope to have your back again in the next episode. 那如果大家感兴趣的话,大家都可以扫描一下屏幕上方的二维码。那我们是有中文咨询的Linda20699770,大家可以扫描二维码来咨询。Linda呢是HRC的这个founder, Dr. Will Cox的这个护士长,大家都可以去找Linda。那同时呢,刚刚说到Dr.Gadea,他是非常非常权威的一位专家。可以说是个明星专家吧，就是因为他在像ABC、福克斯新闻、今日美国、呃、金玉秀等一系列的节目当中都有被受访，所以他可以说是在美国这个行业里面的领军人物。大家可以去咨询他。Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.